Hello everyone. Today let's talk about Vampires of Mythology. Vampire mythology is the collection of legends and stories about vampires, evil beings who feed on human blood and can survive beyond death. Vampires, those enigmatic and alluring creatures of the night, have captivated human imagination for centuries. From ancient folklore to modern literature and cinema, vampires have been a staple of mythologies across cultures. These bloodthirsty beings, often portrayed as seductive yet dangerous, have evolved over time, taking on various forms and meanings in different societies. This extensive exploration delves into the origins, evolution, and cultural significance of vampire mythology. We will examine the ancient roots of vampire beliefs, the diverse folklore surrounding vampires in different regions of the world, their transformation in literature and popular culture, psychological and socio-cultural interpretations, their portrayal in modern media, and even real-life vampire subcultures. Origins of Vampire Mythology The origins of vampire mythology can be traced back to ancient civilizations, where different cultures had their own versions of blood-drinking spirits or demons. Let us begin. Eastern Europe, Slavic Vampires Eastern Europe has long been steeped in folklore and legend, with its dark forests, misty mountains, and ancient villages providing the perfect backdrop for tales of the supernatural. Among the many creatures that haunt the imaginations of Eastern Europeans, none are as enduring or as feared as the vampire. Unlike the suave, aristocratic vampires of Western literature, Slavic vampires are often depicted as grotesque, malevolent beings, lurking in the shadows and preying on the living. Historical and Cultural Background To understand the phenomenon of Slavic vampires, it is essential to delve into the historical and cultural context of Eastern Europe. For centuries, the region has been a crossroads of civilizations, with influences from the Byzantine Empire, the Ottoman Empire, and various nomadic tribes shaping its customs, beliefs, and folklore. In the medieval period, Eastern Europe was a land of feudal lords, peasant villages, and vast swathes of wilderness where travelers could easily vanish without a trace. Life was harsh and precarious, with disease, famine, and warfare constant threats to survival. In such an environment, it is not surprising that people turned to superstition and folklore to explain the inexplicable and to protect themselves from unseen dangers. The Orthodox Christian Church played a significant role in shaping the religious and spiritual beliefs of the region, blending elements of Christianity with pre-existing pagan customs and rituals. The result was a rich tapestry of folklore and legend, where ancient gods and spirits mingled with saints and demons in the collective imagination of the people. Origins of Slavic Vampire Lore the origins of Slavic vampire lore are shrouded in mystery, with elements of the supernatural dating back to pre-Christian times. In Slavic mythology, the world was inhabited by a multitude of spirits, both benevolent and malevolent, who could influence the lives of humans in myriad ways. Among these spirits were the Strigoi, restless souls who had died without proper burial rites and who returned from the grave to torment the living. With the spread of Christianity in the region, these pagan beliefs were gradually absorbed into the teachings of the church, giving rise to a complex syncretism of Christian and pagan elements. The concept of the vampire as a demonic creature, cursed to roam the earth in search of blood, became intertwined with Christian notions of sin, redemption, and the afterlife. The word vampire itself is believed to have Slavic origins, derived from the old Slavic word yuper or oper, meaning one who drinks. Early references to vampires can be found in Slavic folk tales and legends, where they are often depicted as malevolent spirits who prey on the living, draining them of their life force and causing illness and death. 
Characteristics of Slavic Vampires Slavic vampires are typically portrayed as grotesque and terrifying creatures, far removed from the romanticized vampires of Western literature. Unlike their suave and sophisticated counterparts, Slavic vampires are often depicted as bloated and disheveled, with long fingernails, red eyes, and fangs dripping with blood. One of the defining characteristics of Slavic vampires is their insatiable thirst for blood, which they need to sustain their undead existence. According to legend, vampires would rise from their graves at night and stalk the countryside in search of victims, whom they would attack and drain of their blood. In some versions of the myth, vampires were said to have the ability to shapeshift into animals or mist, allowing them to elude their pursuers and strike fear into the hearts of their prey. In addition to their need for blood, Slavic vampires were also believed to possess other supernatural powers, such as superhuman strength, speed, and agility. They were said to have the ability to mesmerize their victims with their gaze, rendering them helpless and pliant to their will. Some legends even claim that vampires could control the weather, summoning storms and fog to conceal their nocturnal activities. Variations and Regional Differences Like all folklore, Slavic vampire lore exhibits a great deal of variation and regional differences, with different cultures and communities having their own unique interpretations of the vampire myth. In Russia, for example, vampires are often depicted as the reanimated corpses of witches or heretics, who were believed to have made pacts with the devil in exchange for supernatural powers. In Ukraine and Belarus, vampires are commonly associated with the Mara, a malevolent spirit that takes on the form of a beautiful woman to seduce and devour men. According to legend, the Mara would visit men in their dreams, draining them of their vitality and leaving them weak and debilitated. In Romania and Moldova, the vampire myth is closely associated with the legend of Dracula, the infamous vampire count who was said to have ruled over the region in the Middle Ages. Dracula, whose real name was Vlad Tepes, was a ruthless tyrant who was infamous for his cruelty and brutality. According to legend, he was also a vampire, who would feast on the blood of his enemies to sustain his undead existence. Folklore and Legends the folklore surrounding Slavic vampires is rich and diverse, with countless tales of encounters with these malevolent creatures passed down from generation to generation. One of the most famous vampire legends is that of the Strigoi, a type of vampire that is said to be created when a person dies without receiving the last rites of the church. According to legend, the Strigoi would rise from its grave at night and terrorize the living attacking them and draining them of their blood. To protect themselves from the Strigoi, villagers would often place garlic or wolfsbane in the mouths of the deceased, or drive a stake through their heart to prevent them from rising again. Another common theme in Slavic vampire folklore is the notion of the damper, a half-human, half-vampire hybrid who possesses some of the powers of the vampire but is not fully undead. Dampiers are said to be the offspring of a vampire and a human, and are often portrayed as vampire hunters or protectors of the living, using their supernatural abilities to combat the forces of darkness. Vampire Hunters and Protective Measures In the world of Slavic vampire lore, the threat of the undead roaming the countryside led to the emergence of vampire hunters and various protective measures aimed at safeguarding communities from these malevolent creatures. Vampire hunters, often portrayed as brave and resourceful individuals, were tasked with tracking down and dispatching vampires, while villagers employed a variety of rituals and talismans to protect themselves from attack. Vampire hunters Vampire hunters were a common feature in Slavic folklore, with tales of their exploits passed down from generation to generation. These individuals were often depicted as courageous warriors or cunning adventurers, 
skilled in the arts of combat and knowledgeable about the ways of the supernatural. One of the most famous vampire hunters in Slavic folklore is the Vampire Slayer, or Vampire Killer. These individuals were usually chosen from among the bravest and most skilled warriors in the community, tasked with protecting their fellow villagers from the depredations of the undead. Armed with swords, stakes, and other weapons, they would venture into graveyards and abandoned castles, hunting down vampires and dispatching them with ruthless efficiency. In addition to their martial prowess, Vampire hunters were often believed to possess special knowledge or magical abilities that enabled them to detect and defeat vampires. Some were said to be able to see through the illusions and disguises of the undead, while others possessed charms or talismans that protected them from harm. Protective Measures In addition to vampire hunters, Eastern European communities employed a variety of protective measures to ward off vampires and other supernatural threats. These measures ranged from simple rituals and charms to elaborate ceremonies and spells, all aimed at keeping the undead at bay. One of the most common protective measures was the use of garlic, which was believed to have potent anti-vampire properties. Garlic would be hung around the doors and windows of houses, placed in the mouths of the deceased, or worn as an amulet by those venturing out after dark. In some cases, entire fields would be planted with garlic to create a protective barrier around the village. Another common protective measure was the use of holy symbols and relics, such as crosses, crucifixes, and icons. These symbols were believed to have the power to repel vampires and other evil spirits and would be displayed prominently in homes and churches. In some cases, villagers would even construct makeshift shrines or altars dedicated to saints or other holy figures in the hopes of gaining their protection. Other protective measures included the use of herbs and charms, such as wolfsbane, vervain, and rowan wood which were believed to have mystical properties that could ward off vampires. Salt was also considered a potent deterrent and would be sprinkled around the perimeter of houses or placed in bowls near windows and doors. Burying the Dead One of the most important protective measures against vampires was ensuring that the dead received a proper burial according to Christian rites. It was believed that vampires were often created when a person died under unusual circumstances or without receiving the last rites of the church. By ensuring that the deceased were buried in consecrated ground, with prayers and blessings from the clergy, villagers hoped to prevent them from returning as vampires. In some cases, additional precautions were taken to ensure that the dead remained in their graves. Corpses would be weighted down with stones or buried face down to prevent them from rising again. In particularly dire circumstances, bodies would be decapitated or staked through the heart to ensure that they could not return to haunt the living. Modern Interpretations and Popular Culture In the modern world, Slavic vampire lore continues to captivate audiences around the globe inspiring a wealth of literature, film, television, and other forms of popular culture. While traditional Slavic folklore provides the foundation for these interpretations, contemporary storytellers often put their own unique spin on the vampire myth, reinventing it for new generations and exploring its enduring themes of love, death, and immortality. Literature In literature, Slavic vampires have been depicted in a variety of ways, from the grotesque monsters of folklore to more sympathetic and complex characters. Authors such as Anne Rice, Stephen King, and Charlene Harris have all drawn inspiration from Slavic vampire lore, weaving it into their own rich tapestries of supernatural storytelling. One of the most famous literary interpretations of the Slavic vampire is Bram Stoker's Dracula which draws heavily on the legends of Vlad the Impaler and the vampire myths of Eastern Europe. Stoker's novel, published in 1897, introduced the world to Count Dracula, 
a suave and sophisticated vampire who terrorizes the English countryside. While Dracula himself is not explicitly identified as Slavic, many of the elements of his character and backstory are drawn from Slavic vampire lore, including his ability to shapeshift into animals and his need for blood to sustain his undead existence. In more recent years, authors such as in Rice have explored the darker and more erotic aspects of vampire mythology, while Charlene Harris's Southern Vampire Mysteries series adapted into the hit television show True Blood, offers a modern twist on the vampire myth, blending elements of horror, romance, and Southern Gothic. Film and Television Slavic vampires have also been a popular subject in film and television, with countless adaptations and interpretations of the vampire myth appearing on screen over the years. From classic horror films such as F.W. Murnau's Nosferatu, to contemporary blockbusters like The Twilight Saga, vampires continue to be a perennial favorite among audiences. One of the most iconic portrayals of the Slavic vampire on screen is Bela Lugosi's performance as Count Dracula in the 1931 film of the same name. Lugosi's portrayal of the suave and sinister vampire set the standard for future depictions of the character cementing Dracula's place as one of the most enduring figures in horror cinema. In more recent years, television shows like Buffy the Vampire Slayer, The Vampire Diaries, and What We Do in the Shadows have put their own unique spin on the vampire myth, blending elements of comedy, drama, and fantasy to create engaging and often subversive narratives. Video Games the world of video games has also embraced Slavic vampire lore, with numerous titles exploring the themes of vampirism and the supernatural. Games like Castlevania, Vampire, The Masquerade, Bloodlines, and The Witcher series all feature vampires as central elements of their gameplay and storytelling, drawing on Slavic folklore for inspiration. In The Witcher series, for example, Players encounter a variety of vampire characters, each with their own unique abilities and motivations. From the feral Bruxy to the cunning Katakans, vampires play a prominent role in the world of The Witcher, offering players the opportunity to explore the darker aspects of Slavic folklore in a rich and immersive fantasy setting. China, Jiangshu. In Chinese mythology, the Jiangshu, also known as Hopping vampires, or Chinese vampires, are undead creatures that bear some resemblance to Western vampire lore but have distinct characteristics rooted in Chinese folklore and beliefs. Here's a creative interpretation of Jiangshu as vampires of mythology. Origins of Jiangshu The term Jiangshu literally translates to stiff corpse or rigid body in Mandarin Chinese. These creatures are often referred to as Chinese vampires due to their undead nature and similarities with Western vampire folklore. The origins of Jiangshu can be traced back to ancient Chinese folklore and superstition, with their roots entwined in various aspects of Chinese culture, including Taoism, traditional medicine, and burial customs. One of the earliest mentions of Jiangshu can be found in the classic Chinese text Guideways of Mountains and Seas, Shan Hai Jing, believed to have been compiled during the Eastern Zhou Dynasty, 770 to 256 BCE. In this text, there are references to hopping corpses, or stiff corpses, that terrorize the living. These early descriptions laid the groundwork for the development of Jiangshu mythology over the centuries. Taoist beliefs also played a significant role in shaping the concept of Jiangshu. Taoism, one of the major religions and philosophical systems in China, introduced the idea of life force or qi qi and the concept of yin and yang. According to Taoist teachings, when a person dies, their qi may linger in the body, leading to the reanimation of the corpse as a jiangshu. Additionally, Taoist rituals and talismans were believed to be effective in warding off or controlling these malevolent entities. 
Another factor contributing to the creation of Jiangshu was China's traditional burial customs. In ancient China, burial rituals were conducted with great reverence and attention to detail. It was believed that improper burial practices or neglected graves could lead to the deceased returning as vengeful spirits or undead beings. Corpses were often buried with various charms, amulets, or weights to prevent them from rising from their graves. Over time, these diverse cultural elements coalesce to form the legend of the Jiangshu, a creature that embodies the fear of death, the supernatural, and the unknown. Characteristics of Jiangshu Jiangshu are typically depicted as reanimated corpses that exhibit distinctive characteristics and behaviors. While there can be variations in their appearance and abilities depending on regional folklore and individual stories, certain traits are commonly associated with Jiangshu across different sources. Appearance Jiangshu are often portrayed as emaciated, stiff-bodied creatures with a deathly pale complexion. Their skin may appear mottled and desiccated, bearing the signs of decay and decomposition. Traditional depictions of Jiangshu often feature them wearing Qing Dynasty attire, reflecting their origins in ancient Chinese folklore. Additionally, their eyes are often depicted as glazed or empty, devoid of life or consciousness. Movement one of the most iconic traits of Jiangshu is their distinctive mode of movement. Unlike Western vampires, which are often depicted as suave and agile, Jiangshu are typically portrayed as stiff and awkward in their movements. They are said to hop or shuffle rather than walk, with their arms outstretched and their bodies rigid. This hopping motion is reminiscent of the rigor mortis that sets in after death, reinforcing their status as reanimated corpses. Sensory Abilities Jiangshu are believed to possess heightened sensory abilities, particularly a keen sense of smell and hearing. They are said to be attracted to the scent of blood and the breath of the living, which they use to track their prey. Additionally, Jiangshu are often depicted as being sensitive to certain sounds or vibrations which can alert them to the presence of nearby humans. Diet Like their western counterparts, Jiangshu feed on the life essence or qi of the living. However, unlike traditional vampires, which typically drink blood, Jiangshu are said to consume the qi directly from their victims. This can be accomplished through physical contact, such as biting or strangling, or through more esoteric means, such as psychic or spiritual manipulation. Vulnerabilities Jiangshu are often portrayed as vulnerable to various talismans, charms, and rituals, particularly those derived from Taoist practices. These protective measures are believed to ward off Jiangshu or render them powerless. Common methods of repelling Jiangshu include the use of peachwood charms, yellow paper talismans, and spells invoking the power of the five elements. Additionally, mirrors are said to have the power to immobilize or repel Jiangshu, as their reflective surfaces are believed to reflect the creature's own malevolent energy back upon itself. Jiangshu in Chinese culture and folklore. Jiangshu have long occupied a prominent place in Chinese culture and folklore, serving as symbols of death, the supernatural, and the consequences of improper burial practices. Throughout Chinese history, tales of Jiangshu have been passed down through oral tradition, literature, and art, shaping the collective imagination of generations. Folk Beliefs and Superstitions In traditional Chinese culture, belief in the existence of supernatural beings such as Jiangshu was widespread. People feared the possibility of encountering these malevolent entities, especially in remote or isolated areas where the boundary between the living and the dead was believed to be thin. As a result, various customs and rituals were developed to protect against Jiangshu and other undead creatures. One such custom was the practice of corpse driving or Jiangshai Jiangshu Ye. 
in which Taoist priests or monks would perform rituals to pacify restless spirits and prevent them from returning as juncture. These rituals often involve the use of talismans, incantations, and offerings to appease the spirits and ensure they remained at peace. Literature and Art The legend of the Jiangshu has also been immortalized in Chinese literature and art, with countless stories, poems, and paintings depicting these undead creatures. One of the most famous literary works featuring Jiangshu is Strange Stories from a Chinese Studio, Liao Zhaiji, a collection of supernatural tales written by Pu Songling during the Qing Dynasty. In these stories, Jiangshu are portrayed as malevolent spirits that terrorize the living, often seeking revenge for injustices committed against them in life. Comparing Jiangshu to Western Vampires While Jiangshu and Western Vampires share certain similarities as undead creatures that prey on the living, there are also significant differences in their origins, characteristics, behaviors, and cultural significance. A comparative analysis of these two distinct interpretations of vampiric beings offers valuable insights into the diverse ways in which human societies have conceptualized and mythologized the phenomenon of the undead. Origins and Cultural Context the origins of Jiangshu can be traced back to ancient Chinese folklore and superstition, with influences from Taoism, traditional burial customs, and folk beliefs about the afterlife. As such, Jiangshu are deeply ingrained in Chinese culture and mythology, reflecting broader societal attitudes towards death, the supernatural, and the spiritual realm. In contrast, Western vampires have their roots in European folklore and mythology, particularly in Eastern European countries such as Romania and Hungary. The archetype of the vampire as a blood-drinking revenant is closely associated with the folklore of the Balkans and Eastern Europe, where beliefs in undead beings such as Strigoi and Nisferatu were prevalent. Over time, the vampire mythos evolved and spread across Europe and eventually to other parts of the world through literature, cinema, and popular culture. Physical Characteristics and Appearance One of the most striking differences between Jiangshu and Western vampires lies in their physical characteristics and appearance. Jiangshu are typically depicted as stiff, emaciated corpses with a deathly pale complexion and glazed eyes. They are often portrayed wearing traditional Qing dynasty attire and move by hopping or shuffling awkwardly. In contrast, Western vampires are often depicted as charismatic, seductive figures with a more human-like appearance. They are typically described as having fangs, pale skin, and hypnotic eyes and are often portrayed as elegant and aristocratic in their demeanor. Diet and Feeding Habits Another key difference between Jiangshu and Western vampires is their diet and feeding habits. Jiangshu are said to feed on the life essence or qi of their victims, which they consume directly through physical contact. In contrast, Western vampires are traditionally depicted as feeding on blood, which they extract from their victims through biting or other means. This fundamental difference reflects broader cultural attitudes towards the nature of life force and vitality in Chinese and Western societies. Behavior and Abilities Jiangshu and Western vampires also exhibit distinct behaviors and abilities in folklore and popular culture. Jiangshu are often portrayed as mindless and predatory creatures driven solely by their instinctual desire to feed on the living. They are typically depicted as lacking the intelligence or cunning associated with Western vampires, instead relying on brute strength and supernatural powers to overpower their victims. In contrast, Western vampires are often portrayed as highly intelligent and manipulative beings, capable of using charm, seduction, and deception to lure their prey. They are also depicted as possessing a wide range of supernatural abilities, including superhuman strength, 
speed, and agility, as well as powers of hypnosis and shape-shifting. These differences in behavior and abilities reflect broader cultural attitudes towards the nature of evil, power, and agency in Chinese and Western societies. Cultural Significance and Symbolism Finally, Jiangshu and Western vampires hold different cultural significance and symbolism within their respective cultural contexts. Jiangshu are deeply rooted in Chinese folklore and mythology, where they serve as symbols of death, the supernatural, and the consequences of improper burial practices. They also reflect broader societal fears and anxieties about the afterlife, the spiritual realm, and the boundary between the living and the dead. In contrast, Western vampires have taken on a more diverse range of meanings and associations over time, ranging from symbols of sexuality and desire to metaphors for addiction, disease, and social decay. They have also been used as vehicles for exploring themes of immortality, morality, and the human condition in literature, film, and other forms of popular culture. Lamia Lamia, a mythological creature often depicted as a vampiric seductress, holds a unique place in Greek mythology. This essay aims to delve into the origins, characteristics, and cultural significance of Lamia, exploring how this ancient figure fits within the broader context of vampire mythology. Origins of Lamia the origins of Lamia can be traced back to ancient Greece, where she emerged as a prominent figure in myth and legend. The earliest references to Lamia can be found in Greek literature, particularly in works such as Aristophanes' Peace and Philostratus' Life of Apollonius of Tyana. However, it is in the poetry of ancient writers like Callimachus and Horace that we find detailed descriptions of Lamia and her exploits. The etymology of the name Lamia is uncertain, but it is believed to have roots in Greek mythology. One theory suggests that Lamia was originally a queen of Libya who was transformed into a child-devouring monster by the goddess Hera as punishment for her affair with Zeus. Another theory posits that Lamia was a beautiful woman who was cursed by Hera after catching the eye of Zeus, resulting in her transformation into a creature that preyed upon children. Regardless of her origins, Lamia quickly became a popular figure in Greek mythology, appearing in various myths and legends throughout antiquity. Over time, her story evolved and merged with other mythological traditions contributing to the rich tapestry of vampire lore. Lamia in Greek Mythology In Greek mythology, Lamia is often portrayed as a beautiful woman with a dark and sinister nature. According to myth, Lamia was once a queen or noblewoman who incurred the wrath of the gods, leading to her transformation into a monstrous creature. One of the most well-known myths involving Lamia is her encounter with the goddess Hera. In some versions of the story, Lamia is described as a queen of Libya who catches the eye of Zeus, the king of the gods. Enraged by Zeus' infidelity, Hera curses Lamia, causing her to become a child-devouring monster. In other versions, Lamia is depicted as a woman scorned by Zeus, who transforms her into a creature that preys upon children out of jealousy and spite. Regardless of the specifics, the myth of Lamia reflects themes of jealousy, betrayal, and the consequences of defying the gods. Lamia's insatiable hunger for children serves as a cautionary tale, warning against the dangers of desire and the pursuit of power. In addition to her association with child abduction and murder, Lamia is also depicted as a seductress who lures men to their doom. In some myths, she is said to possess an irresistible beauty and charm, which she uses to ensnare her victims before draining them of their life force. Despite her monstrous nature, Lamia is also portrayed as a tragic figure, tormented by her own desires and the curse that binds her. 
Some versions of the myth suggest that Lamia was once a loving mother who lost her children, driving her to madness and despair. This interpretation adds depth to her character, portraying her as a victim of circumstance rather than a pure embodiment of evil. Characteristics of Lamia Lamia is typically described as a female creature with the upper body of a woman and the lower body of a serpent or dragon. This serpentine form is often associated with her monstrous nature and her ability to hypnotize and enthrall her victims. One of Lamia's most distinctive traits is her insatiable hunger for children. In many myths, she is depicted as a child-devouring monster who preys upon the young, snatching them away in the dead of night. This aspect of her character reflects the fears and anxieties of ancient Greek society, where child mortality rates were high and supernatural explanations were often sought for unexplained tragedies. In addition to her role as a child predator, Lamia is also portrayed as a seductress who lures men to their doom. Her beauty and charm are said to be irresistible, and she uses these qualities to ensnare her victims before draining them of their life force. This aspect of her character aligns her with the archetype of the femme fatale, a figure of feminine allure and danger found in many mythological traditions. Lamia is also often associated with darkness, both literal and metaphorical. In some myths, she is said to dwell in dark caves or deep forests, emerging only under the cover of night to hunt for her prey. This association with darkness further enhances her mystique and adds to her aura of menace and danger. Despite her monstrous appearance and behavior, Lamia is sometimes portrayed as a tragic figure, tormented by her own desires and the curse that binds her. This portrayal adds depth to her character, emphasizing her humanity and her capacity for suffering and redemption. Lamia in Modern Culture While Lamia originated in ancient Greek mythology, her influence can still be felt in modern culture, where she continues to inspire artists, writers, and filmmakers. In literature, Lamia has been depicted in various works of fiction, including novels, short stories, and poetry. One of the most famous literary portrayals of Lamia is found in John Keats' poem Lamia, which reimagines the myth as a tragic love story between a mortal man and a serpent woman. Keats' poem explores themes of desire, illusion, and the nature of reality while also paying homage to the beauty and complexity of the original myth. In addition to literature, Lamia has also appeared in film and television, where she is often portrayed as a seductive and dangerous creature. One notable example is the 1963 film, The Gorgon, which features Lamia as a monstrous woman with snakes for hair who turns her victims to stone with a single glance. This interpretation draws on the creature's serpentine origins while also playing on themes of fear and transformation. In popular culture, Lamia has become a symbol of female power and sexuality, with her image appearing in everything from fashion and music to advertising and merchandise. Her association with darkness and danger continues to captivate audiences making her a compelling and enduring figure in the pantheon of mythological creatures. Comparisons with Vampire Lore The mythology of Lamia shares intriguing similarities with vampire lore from various cultures, despite originating from ancient Greek mythology. Through comparisons, we can explore these parallels and appreciate how Lamia embodies key elements commonly associated with vampires. Bloodthirsty Nature one of the most striking similarities between Lamia and vampires is their insatiable thirst for blood or life force. In many vampire legends, blood serves as the primary source of sustenance, providing them with vitality and strength. Similarly, Lamia is often depicted as a creature that preys upon the living, draining their life force to satisfy her own desires. This shared motif of bloodlust highlights the primal, 
predatory nature inherent in both lamia and vampires. Nocturnal behavior. Lamia, like vampires, is often associated with darkness and nocturnal activities. In Greek mythology, she is said to dwell in dark caves or deep forests, emerging only under the cover of night to hunt for her prey. Similarly, vampires are typically depicted as nocturnal creatures, shunning sunlight and conducting their activities under the cloak of darkness. This nocturnal behavior adds to the aura of mystery and danger surrounding both Lamia and vampires, emphasizing their otherworldly nature. Seductive Charm Lamia shares the seductive allure commonly associated with vampires. In many myths, she is described as a beautiful and alluring woman who uses her charm to ensnare her victims before draining them of their life force. This seductive charm is a hallmark of vampire folklore, where vampires are often depicted as charismatic figures capable of mesmerizing their prey with their hypnotic gaze or charming demeanor. Both Lamia and vampires exploit their beauty and allure as a means of luring unsuspecting victims into their clutches. Transformation and Shape-Shifting Another shared characteristic between Lamia and vampires is their ability to transform or shape-shift. In Greek mythology, Lamia is depicted as a creature with the upper body of a woman and the lower body of a serpent or dragon, highlighting her ability to take on different forms. Similarly, vampires are often portrayed as shapeshifters capable of assuming various guises or transforming into animals such as bats or wolves. This ability to change form adds to the mystique and adaptability of both Lamia and vampires, allowing them to evade detection and manipulate their surroundings to their advantage. Curses and Origins Lamia's origin story, involving a curse placed upon her by the gods, bears resemblance to the origins of vampires in many folklore traditions. In both cases, supernatural forces or divine intervention play a crucial role in shaping the nature of these creatures. Vampires are often depicted as humans who have been cursed or transformed into undead beings through magical means, such as being bitten by another vampire or making a pact with dark forces. Similarly, Lamia's transformation into a monstrous creature is the result of a curse inflicted upon her by the goddess Hera, highlighting the role of curses and divine wrath in shaping her character. Immortality and Undeath While Lamia is not explicitly portrayed as a mortal in Greek mythology, her association with darkness and death aligns her with the concept of immortality commonly attributed to vampires. Vampires are often depicted as immortal beings who defy death and age, sustaining themselves through the consumption of blood or life force. Similarly, Lamia's status as a supernatural creature capable of surviving for extended periods adds to her allure and mystique, blurring the lines between life and death. Comparisons with Vampire Lore the mythology of Lamia shares intriguing similarities with vampire lore from various cultures, despite originating from ancient Greek mythology. Through comparisons, we can explore these parallels and appreciate how Lamia embodies key elements commonly associated with vampires. Bloodthirsty Nature One of the most striking similarities between Lamia and vampires is their insatiable thirst for blood or life force. In many vampire legends, blood serves as the primary source of sustenance, providing them with vitality and strength. Similarly, Lamia is often depicted as a creature that preys upon the living, draining their life force to satisfy her own desires. This shared motif of bloodlust highlights the primal, predatory nature inherent in both Lamia and vampires. Nocturnal Behavior Lamia, like vampires, is often associated with darkness and nocturnal activities. In Greek mythology, she is said to dwell in dark caves or deep forests, emerging only under the cover of night to hunt for her prey. Similarly, 
Vampires are typically depicted as nocturnal creatures, shunning sunlight and conducting their activities under the cloak of darkness. This nocturnal behavior adds to the aura of mystery and danger surrounding both Lamia and vampires, emphasizing their otherworldly nature. Seductive Charm Lamia shares the seductive allure commonly associated with vampires. In many myths, she is described as a beautiful and alluring woman who uses her charm to ensnare her victims before draining them of their life force. This seductive charm is a hallmark of vampire folklore, where vampires are often depicted as charismatic figures capable of mesmerizing their prey with their hypnotic gaze or charming demeanor. Both Lamia and vampires exploit their beauty and allure as a means of luring unsuspecting victims into their clutches. Transformation and Shapeshifting Another shared characteristic between Lamia and vampires is their ability to transform or shapeshift. In Greek mythology, Lamia is depicted as a creature with the upper body of a woman and the lower body of a serpent or dragon, highlighting her ability to take on different forms. Similarly, vampires are often portrayed as shapeshifters capable of assuming various guises or transforming into animals such as bats or wolves. This ability to change form adds to the mystique and adaptability of both Lamia and vampires, allowing them to evade detection and manipulate their surroundings to their advantage. Curses and Origins Lamia's origin story, involving a curse placed upon her by the gods, bears resemblance to the origins of vampires in many folklore traditions. In both cases, supernatural forces or divine intervention play a crucial role in shaping the nature of these creatures. Vampires are often depicted as humans who have been cursed or transformed into undead beings through magical means, such as being bitten by another vampire or making a pact with dark forces. Similarly, Lamia's transformation into a monstrous creature is the result of a curse inflicted upon her by the goddess Hera, highlighting the role of curses and divine wrath in shaping her character. Immortality and Undeath While Lamia is not explicitly portrayed as a mortal in Greek mythology, her association with darkness and death aligns her with the concept of immortality commonly attributed to vampires. Vampires are often depicted as immortal beings who defy death and age, sustaining themselves through the consumption of blood or life force. Similarly, Lamia's status as a supernatural creature capable of surviving for extended periods adds to her allure and mystique blurring the lines between life and death. Africa Ads The ads, originating from the folklore of various ethnic groups across West Africa, is a shape-shifting vampire-like being that preys upon humans, often by sucking their blood or their life force. In this extensive exploration, we delve into the origins, characteristics, cultural significance, and evolution of the ads within African mythology and its impact on contemporary society. Origins and Etymology of Ads The term ads finds its roots in the U language spoken by the U people of Togo, Ghana, and Benin. In U mythology, the ads is depicted as a supernatural being capable of transforming into a firefly or a bat, allowing it to move undetected among humans. The word ads itself translates to vampire, or spirit of the dead in you culture, reflecting the ominous nature of this creature. While the concept of the ads is most prominently associated with the you people, variations of similar vampiric entities exist among other ethnic groups in West Africa, each with its own name and distinct characteristics. For instance, among the Ashanti people of Ghana, the Sasabonsum is a vampire-like creature with iron teeth and hooks for feet lurking in the treetops to ambush unsuspecting victims. Across the region, these vampiric entities share common themes of nocturnal predation, shape-shifting abilities, and a thirst for human blood or life essence. Their origins can be traced back to ancient animistic beliefs, 
where spirits were believed to inhabit the natural world and could either harm or protect humans depending on their disposition. Characteristics of the Ads In the rich tapestry of African folklore, the Ads is portrayed as a malevolent spirit capable of assuming various forms, often appearing as a firefly, a bat, or even a human. This shape-shifting ability allows the ads to infiltrate human communities undetected, making it a formidable predator of the night. One of the defining characteristics of the ads is its insatiable thirst for blood or life force, which it extracts from its victims using sharp claws or proboscis-like appendages. In some legends, the ads is said to target infants and young children, draining them of their vitality while they sleep. Despite its supernatural nature, the ads is believed to have physical form, albeit one that is elusive and difficult to perceive by ordinary humans. It is often described as possessing a chilling aura or glowing eyes, which serve as ominous omens of its presence. In addition to its predatory instincts, the ads is also associated with witchcraft and sorcery in many African cultures. It is said to be capable of casting spells, causing illness, and even controlling the minds of its victims, further cementing its reputation as a malevolent force to be feared. Ads in African Mythology and Folklore The ads occupies a prominent place in the mythology and folklore of numerous ethnic groups across West Africa, where it is often invoked to explain mysterious deaths, unexplained illnesses, and other misfortunes that befall communities. Among the U people, the Ads is believed to be the spirit of a deceased relative who returns from the afterlife to seek vengeance or to satisfy its craving for blood. It is said to possess individuals, compelling them to commit acts of violence or to feed on the life force of others. In Ashanti folklore, the Sasabonsum is often depicted as a guardian of the forest, protecting its territory from intruders and punishing those who disrespect nature. However, it is also portrayed as a malevolent being that delights in terrorizing humans, particularly those who venture into the depths of the jungle. The ads is not always portrayed as purely evil. In some stories, it is depicted as a tragic figure cursed to roam the earth in search of redemption. These narratives often explore themes of loneliness, longing, and the struggle for acceptance in a world that fears and shuns the supernatural. Throughout West Africa, rituals and charms are employed to ward off the ads and protect against its malevolent influence. These may include amulets made from iron, herbs, or animal parts, as well as incantations and prayers invoking the protection of ancestral spirits. The Cultural Significance of Ads Beyond its role as a bogeyman of African folklore, the Ads holds deeper cultural significance within the communities where it is believed to dwell. Its presence serves as a reminder of the delicate balance between the human and spirit worlds, as well as the enduring power of ancestral traditions and beliefs. In many West African cultures, the ads is invoked in rituals and ceremonies aimed at appeasing the spirits and seeking their protection. Offerings of food, drink, and other gifts are made to placate the ads and ensure that it remains benevolent toward the community. Moreover, the ads serves as a cautionary tale against hubris and arrogance, reminding humans of the consequences of disrespecting the natural world and its inhabitants. It embodies the primal fears of the unknown and the uncontrollable, urging humility and reverence in the face of forces beyond human comprehension. The figure of the ads also plays a role in the social fabric of West African societies, serving as a means of enforcing moral codes and social norms. Stories of the ads are often used to warn against selfishness, greed, and other vices that threaten the cohesion of the community. Ads and Colonial Encounters The colonial encounter in Africa had profound implications for indigenous cultures, including their mythologies and folklore. The arrival of European colonizers brought about significant changes in social, 
political, and religious spheres, challenging existing belief systems and imposing foreign ideologies. Within this context, the ads, along with other elements of African folklore, face suppression, distortion, and marginalization. 6.1 Colonial Perceptions of African Beliefs European colonizers, driven by a combination of religious zeal, economic interests, and notions of cultural superiority, viewed indigenous African beliefs with suspicion and disdain. They often regarded traditional African religions as primitive superstitions incompatible with their own Christian worldview. This attitude stemmed from a Eurocentric perspective that categorized non-Christian spiritual practices as pagan and idolatrous. Christian missionaries played a central role in denigrating indigenous African religions, portraying them as heathenish and diabolical. They saw it as their mission to civilize and enlighten the so-called heathen Africans by converting them to Christianity and eradicating their superstitious beliefs. 6.2 Suppression of Indigenous Spiritual Practices Under colonial rule, efforts were made to suppress indigenous spiritual practices, including those associated with vampiric entities like the Ads. Missionaries and colonial administrators sought to undermine traditional African religions through various means, including coercion, intimidation, and outright prohibition. Missionary activities often targeted practices deemed incompatible with Christian doctrine, such as ancestor veneration, ritualistic ceremonies, and belief in supernatural beings like the Ads. Indigenous religious leaders were marginalized, their authority undermined, and their practices demonized as witchcraft or devil worship. 6.3 Distortion and Appropriation of Indigenous Beliefs In addition to suppression, colonial encounters led to the distortion and appropriation of indigenous beliefs and folklore. European colonizers frequently misinterpreted African myths and legends through the lens of their own cultural biases, portraying them as primitive and savage. The ads, with its associations with blood drinking and shape-shifting, was often equated with European concepts of vampires and demons, further reinforcing negative stereotypes about African spirituality. Colonial writings frequently depicted African folklore as grotesque and barbaric, reinforcing colonial prejudices and justifying the civilizing mission of Europeans in Africa. 6.4 Resistance and Adaptation Despite attempts at suppression and distortion, indigenous African cultures demonstrated resilience in preserving their spiritual traditions, including beliefs in vampiric entities like the Ads. Colonized communities often engaged in acts of resistance against colonial encroachments on their religious autonomy, clandestinely practicing their beliefs and passing them down through oral traditions. Furthermore, some aspects of indigenous African beliefs were adapted to accommodate colonial realities. Syncretic forms of spirituality emerged, blending elements of traditional African religions with Christian symbolism and rituals. This syncretism allowed indigenous Africans to maintain their cultural identities while outwardly conforming to colonial expectations. 6.5 Contemporary Reinterpretations In recent decades, there has been a resurgence of interest in traditional African spirituality and folklore, fueled by movements advocating for cultural revival and decolonization. The ads, along with other supernatural beings from African mythology, has been re-examined and reinterpreted in contemporary contexts. Scholars, artists, and activists have sought to reclaim and revalorize indigenous African beliefs, challenging colonial narratives and stereotypes. Through literature, art, film, in other forms of cultural expression, the ads has been portrayed in more nuanced and empowering ways, reclaiming agency and autonomy for African spiritual traditions. India Vetala In Indian mythology, Vetala holds a significant place, 
embodying the complex and enigmatic aspects of the human psyche and the supernatural world. This essay delves into the origins, characteristics, legends, cultural significance, and modern interpretations of the Vedala, exploring how they differ from and intersect with Western vampire mythology. Origins of Vetala Mythology The roots of Vetala mythology can be traced back to ancient Indian texts, particularly the Baital Pachisi, or 25, Tales of Baital, also known as Vikram and the Vampire. Written in Sanskrit, the Baital Pachisi is a collection of tales within the frame story of King Vikramaditya and the Vetala. It's believed to have been composed in the 11th century CE by the Kashmiri poet Samdiva Bhatta, drawing upon earlier oral traditions and folklore. The Vedala is depicted as a supernatural being, often described as a revenant, ghost, or demon, depending on the interpretation. In the Baital Pachisi, the Vetala is presented as a cunning and mischievous spirit, inhabiting corpses and causing disturbances to the living. Its origins are often linked to curses, unfinished business, or unfulfilled desires, tying it closely to the realm of the undead. Characteristics of Vetala The Vetala embodies a blend of characteristics that distinguish it from other creatures of Indian mythology. Some key features include Corpse Inhabitation One of the defining traits of the Vetala is its ability to inhabit and animate corpses. It is often depicted as dwelling in burial grounds or deserted places where it seeks out bodies to possess. Shape-shifting abilities Like many supernatural beings in Indian mythology, the Vetala possesses the power to change its form at will. This ability allows it to deceive and manipulate humans, often leading to dire consequences for those who encounter it. Wisdom and Trickery Despite its malevolent nature, the Vetala is portrayed as highly intelligent and cunning. It often engages in verbal sparring with humans, testing their wit and challenging their morals through riddles and puzzles. Bloodthirsty Nature while the Vetala is not always depicted as directly consuming blood like traditional Western vampires, it is nonetheless associated with a thirst for life force or vital energy. This aspect of the Vetala's nature reflects its predatory instincts and its parasitic relationship with the living. Curse and Redemption In many tales, the Vetala's presence is the result of a curse or unresolved karma. Its interactions with humans often revolve around themes of fate, destiny, and the consequences of one's actions. Redemption for the Vetala is sometimes achieved through the resolution of its curse or through acts of compassion and selflessness. Legends and Stories The tales of King Vikramaditya and the Vetala form the most well-known corpus of Vetala mythology. In these stories, King Vikramaditya renowned for his bravery and wisdom, is tasked with capturing a Vetala by a sorcerer or sage. Each tale follows a similar pattern. The Vetala recounts a story to King Vikramaditya, posing a riddle at the end. Despite knowing the consequences, Vikramaditya must remain silent until he reaches a specific destination, at which point he must answer the riddle. If he speaks before then, the Vetala will return to its resting place, and the cycle will repeat. Through these tales, the Vetala challenges Vikramaditya's intellect, morality, and resolve. The stories encompass a wide range of themes, from love and betrayal to justice and vengeance, reflecting the complexities of human nature and the moral dilemmas faced by individuals in their pursuit of truth and righteousness. Beyond the Baital Pachisi, the Vetala appears in various other Indian myths and folk tales, often as a malevolent spirit or supernatural entity. In some regions, it is associated with specific deities or spirits, while in others, it is viewed as a more generic type of ghost or demon. Regardless of the context, 
The Vetala embodies the inherent tension between the material world and the realm of the supernatural, serving as a reminder of the mysteries and uncertainties that lie beyond human comprehension. Cultural Significance The mythology surrounding the Vetala holds significant cultural and philosophical significance within the Indian tradition. At its core, the Vetala represents the eternal struggle between good and evil, light and darkness, and the transient nature of existence. Its ability to inhabit corpses symbolizes the impermanence of the physical body and the enduring presence of the soul or spirit. Moreover, the Vitala's role as a trickster figure challenges conventional notions of authority and wisdom, highlighting the limitations of human knowledge and understanding. Its riddles and enigmas force individuals to confront their own biases and preconceptions, fostering introspection and self-awareness. The theme of redemption and forgiveness is another central aspect of Vetala mythology, reflecting the Hindu concept of karma and the possibility of spiritual growth and transformation. Through acts of compassion and selflessness, characters in Vetala tales are able to break free from the cycle of suffering and attain liberation from the bonds of ignorance and desire. The video has come to its end. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss any video uploaded. Thank you.